previously on C90 Adventures. Uh, this is a bad <laughs> Tour company, yay! Girlfriend, woohoo! Snow! Brilliant, let's ride Alaska to Argentina. Wee! The story continues. I mean... The story continues. So, me and Rach were in Alaska, and so were our two Hondas, and after half an hour and a $10 customs charge, the bikes were ours. <laughs> Go. I now pronounce this crate open. Ta-da! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo! All right, get our bikes out. <laughs> With the weather on our side, I took the lid off the box and then me and Rach set about taking the bikes off of the pallet, putting them on the ground ready to assemble. The second that Rachel's bike touched the ground though, it started pissing it down. It rained so hard we had to build a shelter out of the box and bubble wrap that the bikes came in, but eventually we built the bikes, put them all together, except my front mudguard, and headed off to find a campsite. When we got to the campsite, Rach put on an inner tube as a fashion accessory, and we realised that we had rather a large amount of crap to fit on the motorcycles. Somehow we did it, and I really don't know how. It took us so long we actually killed a large part of the campsite with our tent, which we had to apologise for. But eventually, we were off and ready to explore America. Towards the end of the day, we started looking for a campsite, but instead found this awesome empty public-use cabin that you can sleep in for free. It's in the middle of nowhere, the view from it is amazing, and you really feel at one with nature. Here we see the elusive Naked Ed March washing in a cold lake. It's very rare to see him naked in real life, but luckily his ass is all over the internet. <laughs> there it is! Fly on my willy. Of course, we were normally wild camping in the tent, which usually requires some form of off-roading to find a nice hidden spot. Up to this point, though, Rach had only actually done three days of off-roading and hadn't quite perfected her skills yet. Good afternoon, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing down there? I just had to take a rest. I <laughs> love a nice place to sit. But wild camping is worth it. You just need to make sure you know your surroundings. In Alaska, there are lots of animals that want to attack humans, yeah. and lots of humans that want to attack animals. If you go for a piss in the night, be careful where you put your penis. I'm an animal. Run, run, run. <laughs> the animal that I hate most, though, is the mosquito, and there were lots of them. Luckily, Rachel had given me a 3,000 volt mosquito zapper for my birthday called the Executioner. I think it's called that because it doesn't have a safety guard on it, as my friend Leroy will now demonstrate. Do it. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Anyway, it gave us something to do. So, what's this evening's entertainment? Death. Killing mosquitoes. Die. My batteries are running out. The smoke. <laughs> and even that is better than EastEnders. And with a much more in depth storyline. Die. Die. I'm down there at the graveyard. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not that anymore. Anyway, back to motorbikes. We were heading north from Anchorage to get to the Dalton Highway so that we could get to the northernmost road in North America at Prudhoe Bay and get to the Arctic Ocean. From there, we can start our ride south and ride the entire length of the Americas from top to bottom, which is a long way. So we continued our ride and eventually made it to the start of the James Dalton Highway. So what is the Dalton Highway? Well. It's a 414 mile off-road route that connects tarmac to the Prudhoe Bay oil fields at the Arctic Ocean. There are three petrol stations along it with massive gaps between them. The road was also featured on the BBC series World's Most Dangerous Roads. Sorry, World's Most Dangerous Roads. In which Charlie Borman and Sue Perkins drove it in a 4x4. 
So Rach and I put on our world's most dangerous roads expressions, I noted down the very complex speed limit, and we were off. Now we were a bit nervous about riding the Dalton. Bikers have serious accidents on it every year, and we were told that a biker crashed and broke his leg on a gravel section just the previous week. So we decided to take it steady and take in the scenery instead of rushing. And far from being the death road that we'd been told about, we were finding it to be a mix of mediocre tarmac, some loose gravel, and smooth mud. And instead of needing the recommended top spec suspension, the 90s were coping just fine. We were though being very wary of the trucks. We'd been told by a lot of bikers they tried to force you off the road and throw rocks up at you. So we always slowed down or stopped when we met them. Eventually, after 115 miles, we entered the Arctic Circle, which being summer was a lot different to the last time I was there in Norway. Another thing that was different was the amount of food that we were carrying. Now, I'm happy to live on pot noodles, but Rach likes this thing called nutrition and filled our top box full of it. The nutrition is heavy. <laughs> Maybe I have got too much food. <laughs> you definitely don't have an indicator there. Oh, I don't use those anywhere, they're just for show. Well, the day was drawing to a close, so we rode to mile 175 to fuel up the bikes, set up camp, and then continue the ride the next day. So here we are, uh, just setting off today, heading north, uh, going up to Prudhoe Bay, hopefully. Uh, 240 miles to go, uh, where there is nothing, there's no petrol stations, no food supplies, nothing. Uh, we've got enough fuel to make it just, uh, and yeah, so I need to do about 110 to the gallon uh, English. If we do any less, then we run out, uh, but we can't carry any more. So um, let's see how we get on. So we set off around midday and started to notice cute little fairy things at the side of the road. And also running across it. And when we took a break from riding, we spotted one of these furry things run under some metal sheeting, so I went to investigate. I didn't know if they made a noise, though. <laughs> Fuck <hell. laughs> scared the shit out of me. Did he have teeth? <laughs> oh, he's under it. Don't squash him. <laughs> Whoops, this is supposed to be about motorcycles. But they're so cute. No, motorcycles. We continued our journey and eventually made it north of the tree line and somehow ended up in Middle Earth. There wasn't much to look at apart from the oil pipeline and moss. I know, moss. Crazy. Sometimes the scenery was flat with moss, other times there was a hill with moss. Oh, and there's us. And there's the moss. But mostly moss. I've said moss too many times now and it sounds funny. Moss, 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 moss. This is silly. The roads are now mostly, mostly smooth and we were making good progress. And with Rach behind me waving like a nutcase, we were nearly at the town of Dead Horse at Prudhoe Bay when we saw someone with a vehicle slower than ours. So here we are, just pulled off to the side of the road and uh, people think, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to make the, you're not going to be able to make it to Dead Horse on some C90s. Well, I uh, just bumped into this guy who's actually pulling a cart. Uh, he didn't speak much English, but we discovered that he'd been walking for four months since leaving Canada, and he was pulling everything he needed in his car. When we asked him why he was walking, he said it was because you see more of a country when you travel slowly. Well, we can't argue with that. After all, that's why we're on C90s. After telling a few stories, it was time for all of us to carry on our journeys. We never exchanged names, so I'll have to guess. Dave set off pulling his car, and we made the final push and made it to Dead Horse at Prudhoe Bay. When we got there, we discovered that the area is actually just an industrial site, 
and its only purpose is to extract oil from the ground. Also, because it's an industrial site, alcohol is banned. No! And porn is banned. No! Oh dear. Anyway, we had to look around at the sheer scale of this place. It's absolutely massive and reminds me of a moon base. This 30 ton office block is actually a vehicle. And I'm rather worried that the guy driving it hasn't been allowed to knock one out recently due to the porn rules. And during winter, temperatures drop to minus 50, so all the cars have heaters in them and they need to be plugged in permanently just so they can start. And the ground here is actually permanently frozen, so when they bring the warm oil up, you have to change pumps regularly or the permafrost will melt and the whole area will collapse. Well, I found it interesting anyway. We found out that we couldn't actually take our bikes to the shoreline and we had to take a bus. Ugh. But needs must and we were determined to get to the sea. So, hello everybody. Welcome to the Arctic Ocean, the northernmost tip that we can get to. Uh, you join me next to the water, which is very, very cold, next to this uh, sack of dead animals, or whatever they might be. And uh, yeah, from here we can only head south, which is downhill, uh, so we'll go even faster on our bikes. And yeah, um, welcome along to the chaos. So we gave our camera to someone and got our photo together. Ah. After the bus tour we bumped into some awesome guys who asked us if we needed anything fixing. Well, the massive amount of food on Rachel's bike had finally caused the rack to snap, so they welded it up for us. Wicked! And after becoming tired from all this excitement, we decided to treat ourselves to a hotel. The price was way out of our budget, but they have a brilliant way of putting you off camping. Doo -de doo here I am now magically wearing a helmet and shoe covers. I'll just look at this price list. Oh poo, that room's far too expensive. I'll just turn around and look at this piece of paper. I'll take it. So we spent six days budget on the room and took our stuff inside. The only reason we paid that much is because it included unlimited food. <laughs> we ate like kings and had as much takeaway food as possible. <laughs> Why are you doing that? I'm saving space. <laughs> My top got glued as well. Doesn't doesn't save weight though. <laughs> So we gorged ourselves on free food, and eventually someone changed the TV channel. Hi, and welcome back to another exciting episode of World's Most Dangerous Road. In this week's episode, we follow two superheroes as they ride the entire length of the Dalton Highway. Oh my fucking god. This is a road so dangerous that it can only be ridden by the best riders on the planet. Luckily, this team consists of Ed March, a no-nonsense professional who can crash anything. And Rachel Lasham, who's ridden off-road three times in her life. Only sheer luck and Ed's incredibly large penis will allow them to complete this challenge. What did you just say? Quiet. The road contains... Pebbles. <coughs> Moss. <coughs> Deadly animals. <laughs> really long straight roads with no junctions for cars to pull out in front of you. <laughs> roads so bumpy they can only be ridden one handed with suspension from the 1950s. <laughs> ah, but there's massive potholes that you'll only see if you look where you're going. <laughs> or they put signs up to warn you if the road's bad. <laughs> Come on, this is so not dangerous. Who even wrote this crap? Even the deadly trucks slowed down and waved as they passed them. And when it rained on their return journey, sure the mud ended up slippery, but because they're on small light bikes, they just ended up doing donuts in the road and having a great time. I mean, they're on smooth road tyres for fuck's sake, and Ed's still filming one-handed. I've had shits that are more dangerous than this. I mean, you've got two choices. Either these two riders are unbelievably talented, or it's actually just a long road with bumpy and squishy bits. Fuck this, do your own voiceover. I'm going down the pub. Uh, and now in a change to our scheduled programming, we bring you a new series. 
when people don't know they're being filmed. That's enough TV, let's get riding. So it was time to leave Prudhoe Bay and head south, back the way we came. As we set off it started to rain, but luckily the surface at the top is quite rocky so there's not much mud, so the full 8 horsepower gets unleashed. It was as we got further south and into the green valleys that it turned muddy, but as that awesome TV programme showed, the mud actually made the Dalton Highway more fun. The C90 has an awesome combination of low weight, low centre of gravity and thin road tyres that bite into the surface, which means a C90 on a wet Dalton Highway is not that scary at all. It's muddy, but not scary. So Rachel, uh, which countries are you hoping to visit uh, <laughs> along? <laughs> Looks like we can only go to Guatemala. <laughs> yeah, it's quite fun. Is this terrifying? <laughs> I am so terrified right now. I just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> so definitely not giggling the whole time. No. <laughs> At least I can still see out of my visor. Yeah. But, yeah. I think I'll be okay, but pretty terrifying. <laughs> the one thing that was scary though was Rach and I seeing our first ever bears. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay watching from here. Yeah, I think quite a lot of people do. They're very cool. That could make me feel a bit funny. Well, there we go. Wow, a little baby. A little baby bear. Right, wow. Right, well let's uh, let's drive the next uh, 200 metres pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> right. It'll be alright. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> What is the worst that can happen? Right. Once we were a safe distance past them, we stopped to pick a campsite and celebrated surviving our first bear encounter. Good job! <laughs> oh yeah, and camping this far north in summer does mess with your head a bit. So Ed. <laughs> it's very, very light. Yes. Like this light. Um, would you like to tell everyone what time it is? It's half past ten. At night? <laughs> At night, yes. <laughs> no, of not in the morning. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, good luck at getting to sleep. <laughs> yes, I will, uh, I will try my best. I might put my helmet on with the sun visor down in a minute. <laughs> you might have to. You should protect you from the mozzies as well. <laughs> good night. Good night. And that was it. We set off in the morning and did the last miles and completed the Dalton Highway. After 820 miles of mud, tarmac and gravel, we went from clean and smiling to muddy and smiling. We'd seen some new things, made some new friends, and dispelled a few myths. And that's where I'm going to end this video. The Dalton Highway is actually a nice long easy road. If you ride at a sensible speed and slow down when the surface changes to gravel or mud, you'll be fine and you'll have a blast. But if you ride too fast for the conditions, or your bike's too large and it rains, you're probably on borrowed time. Life's too short to rush, take your time and have a laugh. Stay safe guys, see you next time. Well, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This is actually the most favourite video update that I've ever done. Um, my most professional as well I think, even though it's just me on my little laptop. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, want to say thank you uh, and want to help future free video updates coming, then there's the PayPal donate button on my website uh, and the link is here. And also the, uh, there'll be a link in the description to the actual web page to go with this video so that you can see all the pictures and stuff and uh, behind the scenes. So yeah, that'll do. Uh, sorry for the delay, but it took a long time because of all the explosions and everything. Uh, and um, yeah, we're good. <laughs>